How's it going, everyone? My name is Adam Lentz, and I'm here with something a little different today. Um, I've created, or started creating, a new game that I've called Cubex. It's going to be a multiplayer arena shooter uh, with a low-poly style, so I don't have to worry about spending a lot of time modeling. I also began making this game because I'm currently in the market for a job. Um, I've been doing some job searching, and I got into interviews with a company in my state called Ilphonic. Uh, and they gave me some really good constructive feedback as to what I need to improve on in order to be a uh, efficient member of a professional team. And one of those big things they stressed was I need to learn how to do multiplayer in Unreal Engine. Now I figured, okay, how much different from Roblox could it be? Because Roblox has their filtering enabled thing where they have, you know, client to server broadcasts and vice versa and the whole deal. However, Unreal is a lot different, and it took me a little bit to get the hang of, so I definitely understand why they wanted me to uh, to learn some multiplayer. So, I've got a little tech demo for the game here, and I want to show you what I've made so far in the past two weeks. So, on the left, clearly, is the client I'm controlling. There's the other client in the dedicated server that I'm running right now. Um, you can see how it replicates the lean angle, uh, movement, and like base animations like uh, blend spaces and whatnot, those are replicated automatically. However, that's that's all that replicates. The uh, the leaning up and down wouldn't replicate. The montage of me holding the shotgun here wouldn't replicate or like uh, aiming it here. Uh, so those are all things that I had to uh, replicate in my code. Uh, a problem I found is that not a lot of people are doing replication tutorials, networking tutorials for C++, which is what I use. Um, so uh, it took a little longer. I had to read like a 140 page contendium or something. Uh, it was a pain, but I finally got it. I got the hang of it. It clicked and I just want to show you what's going on with the, with the mechanics so far. So as you can see here, I can do a double jump. You can sprint and when you're sprinting, you can hit control and your character will actually start to slide. You can control the direction of your slide roughly. Um, it's not it's not easy to control, but that's the point. It makes you go quicker. You'll be able to get underneath things. It makes your uh, your your visible box on another person's screen a lot smaller, so it's harder to hit you. That whole deal. And then we have the the weapon system, of course. Here I've got the pump shotgun, which is what they both spawn with uh, on default. So you can see, you shoot it, you pump it, shoot it, pump it. There's no ammo. There's no reloading yet. I will be doing that. You will have to reload your weapons. Uh, right now, the ammo is infinite. You can see it replicates particles, replicates the shots, all the whole deal. If I shoot the guy with my shotgun, he's got some blood particles that pop out. Um, here, I'll do the uh, I'll do the bullpup first, and we got the uh, the bullpup rifle here. Um, this one's fun. It's it's the full auto, so you can see you got rapid fire going on. It's shooting out these little shells all over the place. Um, yeah, real fun. Again, shoot the guy, he hits some blood splatters going on. And then the fun one, uh, the one I call a fun one anyway, uh, is the grenade launcher. Because it actually, you know, launches grenades, they bounce along, they, they tink as they hit the ground, and then kablammo, they've got a six second fuse. However, if they hit a actual character, it'll go off as soon as it makes contact with them. So like if I shoot at the ground, run over to it and run it over with my character, it'll blow up. It's got some nice, you know, flak going on. It's got a shock wave, some smoke that hangs around afterwards. All of it is cubes and squares. That's kind of the idea behind the art style of the game, Cubex. I'm going to give uh, the skybox a makeover soon here as well. Um, make the clouds square, make the sun square, you know. But I don't know how often you'll see the skybox when I actually get a map in. I'm not totally sure whether I'm doing an outdoor or indoor map yet. Uh, but, you know, things that all need to happen eventually, as well as uh, IK constraints for the hands, because that's funky, right? <laughs> it's even more funky. Uh, we'll go over to this guy so you can see it. Whee! It's even more funky if uh, you're walking side to side, like your hand will either go way in front or way behind. Um, but, yeah, that's just something I need to add, and that's not going to be very difficult at all. Um, but yeah, you got the double jump mechanic here. You got sprinting. You got the sliding mechanic, all of which is nice and super fun. Um, of course, it replicates from both clients, 
and there are a couple issues with listen servers that I need to figure out. Uh, a couple of animation things between the uh, the client and then replicating up to server. However, it replicates between clients perfectly. No problem there. So as far as dedicated servers are concerned, uh, this game is functioning wonderfully. Um, I can show you some of the problems with uh, with a with a listen server, which is where one of the clients is actually running the server, hosting the server on their end. So it's kind of like a private server, if you will. You can see this is my server side. This one's my client. I'll control my server. So if I do things like uh, like sliding, my character won't turn if I'm the server. Um, let's get over this guy. Also, the double jump is absolutely broken. Whee! He goes into the stratosphere. I don't know if I have like a duplicate somewhere in my code. I'll have to find that. Um, but also, things like uh, if the client slides, he'll start sprinting again, and the dust will be coming out of his head. Uh, so it, it really, it really depends. And I think it only happens on the first time through, and then it's fine from there. But like, uh, yeah, there's there's just a few issues. Um, not really a big deal. Things still work generally fine. It's just there's there's a couple little replication issues happening. Also, um, the UI actually has functions with it that don't replicate to the clients, but works on the server side. So you can see like this uh, this animation there happens, and that's just something that I haven't really looked too far into and just need to fix. But it's it's not a very big deal at all. Um, yeah, for the most part, this is working great. Again, for the most part. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for this game, please let me know. I just want to say that Derelict is not being abandoned. Uh, I'm working on getting it on Steam before I continue updating it. So that's going to be my priority. Uh, and then this game is going to be kind of on the side when there's nothing I can do. When something is updating within or on Steam's side. So, And then, you know, just another pro uh, portfolio item for me so that I can hopefully soon sooner than later uh get myself a job with a studio and start making games with a professional team and move out of mom and dad's house <laughs> so anyway thank you guys for watching please let me know suggestions comments questions whatever whatever you wish to let me know about uh yeah and i'll see you guys later here's my desktop again enjoy that all right bye-bye